I knew the thing was getting closer. Eventually, it got close enough that I, I took my phone out and took a picture of it. After interviewing an airline pilot who had to take evasive action to avoid hitting a UFO. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you my so pleasure. much. I really appreciate it. Lou Elizondo meets a new pilot who claims a UFO intercepted his plane in one of the closest alleged encounters on record. Please have a seat. So I was a pretty experienced captain, seen a lot. In the military, I was a night instructor. I had a lot of experience under my belt at that point. Peter Kiriazes flew multiple aircraft, from fighter jets to the Boeing 777, for more than 30 years. But this is a guy who winds up joining the Marine Corps and becoming a Cobra attack helicopter pilot, but then makes a decision to move up to becoming a Marine Corps fighter pilot. Pete is one of those guys who's trained to actually go into combat and, and look for trouble. In 2003, Captain Kiriaza says he had a UFO encounter that would haunt him for years and underscore what's at stake for millions of passengers. It was a little bit after 9-11. Everybody was uh, a little sensitive. So uh, we felt a little more of a bond to our passengers. Uh, it was a beautiful night, no clouds, uh, smooth air. Uh, we blasted off from Dallas-Fort Worth. We had one leg left to Charlotte. Uh, the airplane was functioning perfectly, got up to 35,000 feet and started cruising, and everybody just relaxed. And then all of a sudden, I get a radar altimeter display, and it immediately just pops on. A radar altimeter is designed to let the pilot know how close the plane is to the ground. It's a simple system. It's just emitting a straight a vertical radar beam. When you transition to land, it'll go 100 feet, 50 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet. So at 35,000 feet cruising along, I get a radar altimeter display 2,500 feet. It has to bounce off something. It can't just generate. Captain Kiriazes is shocked. The altimeter is telling him something is only 2,500 feet directly below his plane. And I'm thinking, it's got to be just erroneous. It's got to be just a mistake. But then, the situation becomes much more serious. So then it goes 22, 23, 20, 18, 17. And then it stops. The first officers and I just immediately snapped to attention. Some object was coming up underneath me, unverifiable, unidentifiable, but undeniable. They've called the tower. The tower says we see nothing. Radar, nothing on radar. There's nothing squawking. Squawking is a term that they use for something that is pinging with a transponder in a frequency that we can identify as being a, a friendly aircraft. Then, as the captain and his co-pilot continue to monitor the radar altimeter, the mysterious object makes moves again. And then it goes 18, 17, 15, 12, and it went to 1,000 feet. It was behaving in a way that wouldn't really be logical if it was broken. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, let's make some turns. You're allowed to make shallow S turns uh, without getting air traffic control busy or upset. So we made some shallow S turns and, you know, we're kind of trying to look over our wing and below us or behind us and we couldn't see anything. He's not willing to jump to any conclusion of what this might be. He goes through the necessary process of elimination. Okay, could it be this? No, could it be that? No, could it be this? No. And then it went 800, 700, 500, 400, 300, and it stopped. I mean, the worst possible situation to be in as a captain, your brain says this can't be happening, but you have to deal in the here and now in the present. So then it goes 200, then it goes 100. How close is 100 feet when you're flying an aircraft at 525 miles an hour at 35,000 feet? 100 feet is, it, it, it's, it's a thumbnail away from, from where you're at. And that distance can be close in literally a fraction of a second. The worst case scenario is not even thinkable. You have the responsibility of all these lives. 
You have to make a split second decision coming soon and you have nothing to base it on but one bit of information. If Captain Kiriazes' readings are correct, something is flying directly under his plane and closing in. With nearly 100 passengers on board, he readies himself to take control. If you've ever seen a jet, they've got a little button here. It's called the autopilot button. My thumb was hovering over the autopilot button. I said, if it gets inside 100 feet, I'm going to maneuver. Captain Kiriazes keeps his eyes locked on the altimeter reading of 100 feet. It just stayed there. It seems just eternal. It was just so long. And then it just, it just went away. And at that point, we, our heart rate's going pretty fast, and we thought, what the heck just happened? A short time later, the flight lands in Charlotte, and Captain Kiriazes begins looking for answers. I checked the logbook on that airplane. It never had happened before. And in all the 30 years of flying with a radar altimeter, that has never happened. With anybody I've ever talked to, it's never happened. Experts are at a loss as to what could have been beneath the plane. I've talked to some very brilliant pilots, Air Force Academy, Naval Academy, and I've, I've posed this to them many times, and no one can really give me a good answer. And so the conclusion is there's something else with a technology that's much more sophisticated than ours that's operating in a, with, a, with an additional set of physical laws and rules.